The Thought Fox by Ted Hughes I imagine this midnight moment's forest. Something else is alive besides the clock's loneliness and this blank page where my fingers move. Through the window, I see no star. Something more near, though deeper within darkness, is entering the loneliness. Cold, delicately as the dark snow, a fox's nose touches twig, leaf. Two eyes serve a movement that now and again, now and now and now, sets neat prints into the snow between the trees. And warily, a lame shadow lags by stump and in hollow of a body that is bold to come across clearings. An eye, a widening, deepening greenness, brilliantly, concentratedly, coming about its own business, till with a sudden, sharp, hot stink of fox, it enters the dark hole of the head. The window is starless still. The clock ticks. The page is printed. Welcome. Have you ever sat with a blank sheet of paper before you, hoping for an idea as you put pen to paper? When Ted Hughes wrote this poem, he had not written anything for a whole year. The fascinating thing about this poem is that it explores creativity. How that flash of inspiration slowly takes shape in your mind, eventually to become that poem. Ted Hughes was born in 1930 and he died in 1998. He was born in Yorkshire and as a child he roamed the Yorkshire moors with his brother and this gave him a lasting interest in and understanding of the world of nature and all of its creatures. And this, of course, pops up in many of his poems. I believe that this poem is part of an age-old tradition of poetry that draws on the idea of the muse of inspiration. However, I think that Ted Hughes adds his own fresh and vital voice to this tradition and that enables him to share with the reader that magical moment of creativity. There are possibly also echoes of other poems, other famous animal poems 
in this poem. Certainly in the opening line, um, one cannot help recalling William Blake's famous poem, The Tiger. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. Or even um, Hopkins's wonderful poem, which I have read on my channel, uh, called The Wind Hover. I caught this morning, morning's minion, all those repeated M's. Um, Ted Hughes became Poet Laureate in 1984, and he held this post until the end of his life. This poem is composed of six quatrains. And if we look even at the title, The Thought Fox, it makes quite clear that the, the fox is a fox of the mind, doesn't it? And then if we move from there onto the first quatrain, I imagine this midnight moment's forest. Something else is alive besides the clock's loneliness and this blank page where my fingers move. The very first line focuses our attention firmly on the imagination. Even the first two words, I imagine this midnight moment's forest. Um, here, the darkness of the forest conjures up the idea of something um, unclear, undefined, although it does say something else is alive besides the clock's loneliness. So it begins with a direct appeal to our imagination. Something else is alive. Is it the imagination that is alive besides the clock's loneliness? So we get the image of um, Ted Hughes, the poet, sitting alone in the dead of night, um, sitting with a blank page in front of him, and the ticking of the clock emphasizes that he is alone. And this is, um, this is quite a usual image of a writer, isn't it? Typically, sometimes writers write at unorthodox times, um, perhaps in the middle of the night or in the early morning or whenever the muse calls, perhaps. Um, and here, the idea of the clock's loneliness um, clock is personified here, it's as if um, it conveys the image or even emphasizes the image of him being alone, writing or in the middle of the night with a blank page in front of him. And then um, in the second quatrain, through the window I see no star. Something more near, though deeper within darkness, is entering the loneliness. So loneliness repeated again there. Um, and he rejects the traditional idea of the stars inspiring the poet to write. He looks through the window, he sees no star. Something more near, though deeper within darkness.
darkness. So the inspiration comes from something closer to the poet, something more near, though deeper within darkness, something closer and yet undefined, something unclear, something deep down perhaps within himself. Perhaps within, perhaps he's not conscious precisely of what it is, yet, or perhaps it's part of his subconscious mind. In the third quatrain, cold, delicately in the dark snow, a fox's nose touches leaf, twig, two eyes serve a moment that now and again now and now and now sets neat prints into the snow. So we become aware of the cold, the icy cold. And the first image that we become aware of is the fox's nose tentatively touching twig and leaf. So the sensitivity of this fox's nose, um, perhaps lifting the snow, touching twig and leaf. And immediately after, two eyes serve a movement. Um, so the focus moves to the fox's eyes. Um, and the repetition of that now and again, now and now and now sets neat prints into the snow, gives a sense of gathering momentum, the fox's eyes darting this way and that, perhaps like the thoughts of the poet himself. And it's immediately followed by those neat prints rushing this way and that in the snow. And we see the image of these neat prints in the snow between the trees. And warily a lame shadow lags by stump and in hollow of a body that's bold to come across clearings. Um, we catch glimpses then of the shadow that lags behind, but this is a prelude to the body that comes boldly across the clearing. In the next quatrain, an eye a widening, deepening greenness, brilliantly, concentratedly coming about its own business. So ultimately, there's a description of the I, brilliantly conceived in his mind, the green eye of the fox and the idea that began so vaguely suddenly becomes brilliant, vivid and actual. In the next quatrain, till with a sudden, sharp, hot stink of fox it enters the dark hole of the head. The window is starless still. The clock ticks. The page is printed. And there's this marvelous moment in the poem which evokes the reality of that fox till 
with a sudden sharp, hot stink of fox. Um, the smell of that fox as it enters the dark hole of the head. And there's a neat little symmetry there between the fox's hole and the fox and, and the hole of the head of the imagination where the, po the fox itself becomes actual. The window is starless still. The clock ticks. The page is printed. So externally, nothing has changed. The view from the window is the same. There are no stars. But internally, it's as if there is enormous change. It's, it's as if the poet himself is, is galvanized with excitement um, and certainly um, with the, uh, the realization that the poem has been created. The poem ha is actual. Of course, you could look from another perspective, from another perspective, perhaps, externally, the actual fox has traversed the landscape. Perhaps an actual fox was the source of the inspiration. But either way, the fox has now become vividly actual in the mind, in the imagination, and the poem is printed on the page. Isn't that absolutely marvelous? Um, if you found this poem inspiring, then please um, click subscribe and visit me at my website formuse.org